Almost all archaeology is interesting to an extent, but there's nothing quite so exciting as what's been discovered recently. Old discoveries have been poured over and studied by countless academics, but more recent ones often still hide secrets. Fortunately, there have been plenty of fascinating archaeological discoveries made in recent times. Here are some of the very best of them. Tattoos are very popular in the present day, but the art of tattooing is a very old one. To be more specific, it's at least 3,620 years old. We know that because of the discovery of these sharpened turkey leg bones at a site in Tennessee, USA in April 2021. It's thought that the hollowed-out bones were used as tattoo needles, which would make them the oldest tattooing tools in the world. Dating the bones has been difficult for scientists, but 3620 is the youngest age they could possibly be. It's possible they could be as old as 5,520 years old. The deliberately sharpened ends contain pigment stains, which archaeologists claim is proof of their purpose. It's a surprising discovery because Native Americans weren't previously thought to have started tattooing each other until 3,000 years ago at the earliest. A few pigment-stained seashells found in the same grave as the bones might have been used as inkwells by the artist, who's presumably the person buried in the grave. It probably wasn't a very hygienic process, but it would have worked just fine. Cats are famously aloof animals which sometimes makes us wonder why we bothered domesticating them in the first place. We did, though, and we did it a very long time ago. In July 2020, archaeologists discovered a collection of cat remains in Poland, seemingly buried on purpose some 6,200 years ago. The land they're buried on is on the periphery of an ancient farming settlement, which implies that they were at least semi-domesticated even back then. The bones represent the earliest known examples of cats living close to humans in Northern Europe. They might not have been regularly fed by their human friends, though. Analysis of their bones shows that they lived on foraged rodents, which might imply that the farmers used them as rat catchers. At some point, over the next one or two thousand years, the cats must have got closer and closer to humans until one day some of them went inside their homes and refused to leave. That's usually how cats pick their owners anyway. Very little study has been done on the domestication of cats in Europe, so this might be the start of that process. Speaking of discoveries by Polish archaeologists, a team from Poland just achieved a rare first in the field of Egyptian archaeology. In late April 2021, they confirmed the discovery of the first and only known example of an Egyptian woman being mummified and embalmed while still pregnant. It's a fairly grim discovery, but still fascinating in its own way. The surprising find was made by the country's Warsaw Mummy Project, which then notified the Journal of Archaeological Science. The big surprise here is that the mummy had been examined before, but was thought to be the remains of a male priest. Modern radiological technology allowed these scientists to correct the findings of the predecessors. They believe the woman was between 20 and 30 years old when she passed. She lived around 2100 years ago and probably belonged to a wealthy family. The woman's organs, wrapped and embalmed, were found within her abdominal cavity, but the fetus remained untouched. That could be due to difficulties removing it, or it might be due to Egyptian spiritual beliefs about the afterlife. Unfortunately, the cause of death couldn't be identified. Many countries across Europe have their own version of Britain's Stonehenge, the famous stone circle in Wiltshire. The prehistoric residents of Europe were big on building stone circles and mounds, and nobody really knows why. It was clearly a widespread practice, though, as we can see here from this recently discovered stone circle in Ukraine. It was found in May 2021 and is already being referred to as the Ukrainian Stonehenge by the nation's press. The mound is found in the village of Nova Lixandrovka and is thought to be a little over 5,000 years old. That means it predates the Egyptian pyramids. It was most likely created by the native Indo-Aryan tribes. Unlike Stonehenge, this mound appears to have been used for human burials. 
There are 11 burial sites situated around the mound, but space within it was probably reserved for shamans and leaders. The numerous stone slabs that make up the monument appear to have been cut by hand and are thought to have been transported to the site by water. After excavation work is completed later this year, local authorities hope to turn this area into an open-air museum. You need special permission to carry out archaeological research and digs within Vatican City, and that permission isn't granted very often. That makes this next discovery very exciting. It turns out that many elite members of Roman society who lived during the time of Julius Caesar are buried within its walls. More than 250 burials have been found so far, and the excavation project is still ongoing. The burials are all within Santa Rosa, an ancient Roman necropolis that predates Vatican City and is now buried underneath it. Only a tiny proportion of the graveyard has been explored prior to this new initiative. The tombs range in age from the 1st to the 4th century and also come in a variety of styles. There are chamber tombs, hand-carving sarcophagi, and even open-air burials. Many of the people buried here went to their eternal rest accompanied by stunning funerary portraits and elaborate marble headstones and sculptures. What surprised historians the most about these finds is that the wording of some of the headstones implies that some of these people were born poor, perhaps even as slaves, and worked their way up the social ladder. It might even be that the Romans had a greater degree of social mobility than many people enjoy today. Viking burial ships are impressive, but not necessarily uncommon. There's something a little unusual about the one that's just been found in Hjarno, Denmark, though. The Kalvesting Gravefield is famous in Denmark and has been studied many times before, but never quite like this. Legend has it that the site contains monuments to an ancient king called Hjarni, who won the crown by writing a touching poem about the death of the previous king on the battlefield. Researchers haven't found any direct evidence of that, but they have noted that this burial field is different to any other in Denmark. It does away with the familiar triangle and oval stone shapes and instead focuses exclusively on ship shapes. It's closer in design to tombs in southern Sweden than anything seen before in Denmark. That raises the question of whether there were close cultural links between the two regions during the Viking era or whether this is just a coincidence. There are more than 20 so-called ship settings in this relatively small area, which suggests that someone important was buried at the heart of them. But was it an ancient poetic king? They'll need to do more digging before they can confirm that. There isn't much call for ice houses in the 21st century. The invention of the freezer is seen to that. They were common sites in the 18th century, though, and in London, there's one still standing. It's just that everybody had forgotten it was there until it was rediscovered in early 2019. The enormous ice house is right next to Regent's Park and was found during an archaeological survey conducted ahead of the planned development of a new hotel. It's almost 25 feet wide and more than 30 feet deep. The egg-shaped structure is still in workable condition, as we can see from these images. Unusually, both the antechamber and entrance passage have also survived the passage of time, including the bombing raids of the Second World War. It's thought that this particular ice house belonged to a confectioner and ice merchant, William Leftwich, in the 1820s. From here, he supplied ice to the rich residents of Georgian London. Rather than collecting and freezing ice from the dirty local canals or the River Thames, he imported it from Norway at great expense. His creation will now be incorporated into the design of the new hotel. We know that dinosaur discoveries don't really belong to the science of archaeology, but everybody loves dinosaurs, so let's check one out anyway. This is another find that comes from the UK. The cliffs of Hastings on England's southern coast were badly battered by heavy storms during 2018, speeding up erosion and exposing things that have remained hidden for millions of years. Scientists have spent the past two years poring over the exposed areas and have identified dozens of different dinosaur footprints from multiple different species of dinosaur. 
They've hailed the discovery as the most important Cretaceous era find in British history. The roll call of dinosaurs who left their prints on the cliffs includes stegosaurs, theropods, ankylosaurs, sauropods, and iguanodontians. They're so well preserved that even the texture of the claws and scales are still visible. All of the prints were left around 120 million years ago. The British Isles would still have been connected to mainland Europe back then, so the giant lizards probably walked here from what's now France. Coastal erosion isn't great from an environmental point of view, but at least it has its upsides. Archaeologists often find themselves wishing that their discoveries came with a helpful label to tell them who they belong to. In the case of this Egyptian discovery, it actually happened. This is the tale of a royal palace that was found buried in the sands of Abydos, Egypt in mid-2019. A team of American experts has been slowly uncovering and studying the site ever since, and they recently found a single cartouche that identifies its owner. They can now say with confidence that this was once the home of Ramses II, one of the greatest pharaohs of them all. He belonged to the 19th dynasty of the New Kingdom, largely regarded as ancient Egypt's greatest era some 3,200 years ago. After finding the cartouche, they pushed on further and found a column that bears his inscription in the building's main hall. Some of the hieroglyphs inside the palace indicate that there ought to be a temple right next to it, so finding that will be the next job for the experts. This discovery might even change the traditional perception of Abydos. It's always been viewed as a religious and spiritual site, but it may have also been an important political center. When our next find was made, the American press described it as the discovery of a Game of Thrones sword. That's not even nearly accurate, but we can see why they got carried away. It's a stunning sword, and it wouldn't look out of place on the show. The weapon was found by construction workers as they dug a new sewer in the Danish city of Aalborg in 2019. It's in such a good state of preservation that the workers wondered whether someone might have lost it recently. But it's actually from the 14th century. Whoever owned this blade must have been a mighty warrior. It's nearly four feet long, and it takes a strong person just to lift it. Swords like this were considered high-status items at the time of their manufacture, so it's unusual to see one abandoned on its own like this. They were usually buried with their owners. Perhaps there's an explanation, though. Aalborg is one of Denmark's oldest cities and saw many violent battles during the Middle Ages, including a few civil wars. The sword may have been lost in one such battle, covered over with mud, and then never seen again until now. Few countries on Earth can boast as many ancient temples as Peru, the former home of the Inca. It takes a special temple to stand out from the crowd in the South American country, but this one might just do it. It's a megalithic temple in the Huaca el Toro archaeological site, built 3,000 years ago, and archaeologists believe that it may have been used by a secretive water cult. The temple is positioned between the joining point of two smaller rivers that combine to create the Zana River. No hydraulic technology existed in the Americas of the time, so easy access to water was essential for survival. The importance of water to the formative era people who lived here is symbolized by the one burial that's been discovered here thus far an adult male buried with a ceramic bottle that features two water spouts. It's likely that the temple was specifically used to conduct fertility rituals, which were common at the time, although the presence of tiny wells known as pasitos suggests that the building was also used to both predict and pray for rain. Right on the border of Russia and Mongolia is a spectacular ancient art gallery covered in paintings and inscriptions of the world around them made by people who lived here 15,000 years ago. Among their favorite things to draw were rhinos and woolly mammoths. The petroglyphs, which were likely made by the same culture but stretch all the way across the border, have been studied before but were once thought to be 7,000 years younger than they actually are. 
The most notable glyphs can be found at the sites of Baga Oigar, Tasagan Salah, and the Yukok Plateau. Part of the confusion can be put down to the fact that it's taken years for experts to agree that the woolly mammoths represented in the paintings are actually woolly mammoths. Until very recently, some experts thought they were mythical creatures with long trunks. Woolly mammoths became extinct in this area 15,000 years ago, so the paintings are at least that old and perhaps even older. There are similarities between these drawings and the cave art of the Upper Paleolithic era in Western Europe, but it's too early to say whether there's a cultural connection. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.